Welcome to a lesson on polar coordinates. So far we have been graphing on the coordinate plane using rectangular coordinates as we see here where the x-axis is the horizontal axis, the y-axis is the vertical axis, and the point in the center is called the origin. We will now study the polar coordinate system and the polar coordinate system is based on a point called the pole here and a ray called the polar axis which is usually drawn in the direction of the positive x-axis. So here's the polar axis. The point P on the polar coordinate system is located by giving the directed distance R from the pole and the angle theta from the positive x-axis to ray OP. So if this is our point P, the distance from point O to point P would be the directed distance R and the angle formed between this ray and the polar axis would be the possible angle for theta. A point given using polar coordinates is given in the form R comma theta. Now if R is greater than zero, the point P lies on the terminal side of angle theta. However, if R is negative or less than zero, the point lies on the ray pointing in the opposite direction of the terminal side of theta. Let's go and take a look at how this works. If we want to plot these points, first the point three, three degrees, we would go out three units on the polar axis and then rotate three degrees for point P. So here would be the ray, here would be our angle theta, and it's three units from the pole. For point Q, we would go out two units and rotate three pi over two radians, and that would bring us to here, be point Q. Notice the next two have negative values for R. So we're still going to go out the absolute value of negative four units, so we'll go out to four, on the polar axis, rotate 60 degrees, but now since R is negative, we will actually plot this point at the end of the ray pointing in the opposite direction, or we go to the opposite side of this circle to here. This is point R. And for point S, again we'll go out the absolute value of negative one unit, so we'll go out one unit on the polar axis, rotate negative pi over three radians, so that would be to here, but then we'll plot point S at the end of the ray pointing in the opposite direction, so we would be here. So that brings us to the next point. Polar coordinates of a point P are not unique. We can list the polar coordinates of this point P in an infinite number of ways. Let's see if we can come up with four different ways. First, we can see that it's three units from the pole so that means that R could equal three or R could equal negative three. Let's stick with a positive value of R first. So if we use a positive value for R, the first possible angle for theta would be 60 degrees. Now any angle that's coterminal with 60 degrees would also work for theta. So we could go around the circle one more time. 60 degrees plus 360 degrees would be 420 degrees. Or if we wanted to use a negative angle, this would be negative 300 degrees. And of course we could keep doing this forever. Let's see if we can use a negative three now. If we're gonna use a negative R value, the terminal side of our angle should point in the opposite direction. So an angle that is terminal here will work if we use a negative value for R. So we could use 180 plus 60 or 240 degrees or any other angle that's coterminal to 240 degrees. Okay, now let's take a look at the relationship between rectangular and polar coordinates. If this is our point P, what we could do is sketch a reference triangle using this ray as the hypotenuse, and that would look something like this. So this distance would be x, this would be y using rectangular coordinates, and using polar coordinates, this would be r and this could be theta. So right away we can see that this is a right triangle, so x squared plus y squared would equal r squared. That's where this formula comes from. The tangent of angle theta would be opposite over adjacent, or y over x. That verifies this formula. And then for these other two, if we take the cosine of angle theta, that would be y over r. Solving for y, we would have y equals r sine theta. And if we take the cosine of angle theta, that would be equal to x over r 
Again, solving for x, we would have x equals r cosine theta. And these formulas are very helpful when we want to convert back and forth between rectangular and polar coordinates. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Give the polar coordinates of the given rectangular coordinates two different ways. Let's first go ahead and plot the point, negative one, negative one, that would be here. Next, what we can do is try to use these formulas to come up with r and theta. So using the Pythagorean theorem, we know that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, so r squared is equal to two. So we can use the value of plus or minus the square root of two for the value of r. We'll come back to this idea. Let's see if we can find a possible angle for theta. It says tan theta is equal to y over x. Well, negative one over negative one is equal to one. Remember, using our reference angles, the tangent of 45 degrees is equal to one. So theta is equal to 45 degrees. However, remember that the tangent function is also positive in the third quadrant, and that's actually where our point is. So a reference angle of 45 degrees in the third quadrant would actually be an angle of 225 degrees. So converting from rectangular to polar coordinates does take some additional thought. We can't just strictly rely on the formulas. Let's go ahead and see if we can find two ways to express this point using polar coordinates. Let's see if we can use a positive value for r first. So if we use positive square root two for the value of r, our coterminal, the terminal side of our angle must be in the third quadrant. And so then we would have to use the angle of 225 degrees. Notice if we used 45 degrees, we would actually be over here in the first quadrant, and that won't work with a positive value of r. But if we do want to use the negative value of r, negative square root two, then our terminal side of the angle would have to be in the opposite direction. And therefore, if we use negative square root two for r, we would have to use theta of 45 degrees. So again, when you're converting from rectangular to polar, it's important that we do sketch the point and make sure that the values we use for r and theta do match up to the exact point that we're looking for. Let's go ahead and try the conversion in the other direction now. We want to convert negative one pi over three to rectangular coordinates. Again, let's go ahead and plot this point. We would go out one unit on the polar axis, rotate pi over three radians, but since r is negative one, we're going to plot this point in the opposite direction. So this is point E. So notice here we're in the third quadrant, the x and the y coordinates should both be negative. Let's go ahead and use these first two formulas now. X is equal to r cosine theta, so negative one times cosine of pi over three, and y is equal to negative one times sine theta. So we need to find the sine and cosine of pi over three radians. Let's go ahead and sketch a reference triangle for this. That's a 60 degree angle. So we have one, two, square root three. So x is equal to negative one times the cosine of pi over three would be adjacent over hypotenuse or one half. So we have an x coordinate of negative one half. For y, we have negative one times the sine of pi over three, or 60 degrees. That would be square root three over two. So we have negative square root three over two. Notice both the x and the y coordinates are negative. So we have negative one half, negative square root three over two, using rectangular coordinates. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.